Okay, so the power circuit is now working. We've got DC power, and as we saw in the last video, the uh, display is not working. So now it's time to have a look at the display and see what's going on there. Now, this is a multiplex display, and it'll be driven from the micro over here. So I'll just zoom in a little bit and have a look. You can have a look at what's going on. Don't like that soldering much. Okay, something to point with. So you've got your, your microprocessor over here, then you've got your three shift registers. They are probably shift registers. Yeah, they are. And they, um, the micro will have a clock pin which clocks the data in to the shift registers. And the, the data that's clocked in is it percolates through the outputs of the shift registers, okay? So by putting the right ones and noughts and clocking them through, you can very quickly, much faster than your eye can perceive it, load the data. Then each one of these um, pins on the uh, shift registers the output is pulled low through these resistors um, to the seven segment display and the decimal points and what have you and then um, so that's the what you would call the if you like rows and columns and then the these transistors up here are PNP transistors hooked up to the 5 volt rail via these resistors for the segments and by um, clocking each one of these in turn you can strobe the four digits and the decimal points, all right? So um, these are the rows and the columns come from here. So by multiplexing the data and switching the right column on, you can display the actual numbers that you want to see on your display. Um, these are very cheap chips, so I might as well just change those. There are something like 20p each. It's not worth my time even scoping them. Um, and then we'll look at the display itself. And... Uh, check that and see whether it's actually so we need to know whether the display has got some blown segments or there's something wrong with this multiplexing circuitry if the uh, digit multiplex has got uh, were playing up you'd end up with a digit on all the time or dimly displayed uh, numbers which are incorrect if one of these is not working then one digit wouldn't be working at all um, and course if you've got some shorted segments on the display then you'd have segments out on the display which is what we seem to have but I'm just going to change these three um, and if it still doesn't work change the display so this is part two of the video on the NEF integrated tumble dryer washing machine controller okay so that's the next stage right so that's looking at the back of the old display I was wondering whether that was actually a, sometimes you can see little scars on these things like there, but I think that's just flux. I suppose to do this properly without speculating you could take the driver chips off and then meter the display and see whether any segments are burnt out. But I always prefer to have a quick look first because it can save you a lot of time by messing about wondering what's wrong just by looking. Plus the fact it's always interesting to embarrass the other engineers because it's, it's fun. As my boss used to say you can embarrass them but don't bully them. It's alright then. Oh look. Can you see that pin moving? Do you think that's soldered? Do you? I don't, look. Can you see that? On the uh, mix, the video mix, I will... Well, there's one unsoldered pin. It may not go anywhere. That one's not soldered. Left the factory without being soldered. Victory of style over content. Do you know what? I don't think this is a wave soldered board. I think this is reflow soldered and they put the hand mounted components, the three mounted ones on afterwards, judging by. Another one, another unsoldered pin. It's all right. Yeah, just because they're unsoldered doesn't mean to say that they're faulty, but you can see it is a bit sparrow shit, isn't it? It doesn't look like it's been re properly, because the end of those solder blobs should be flowed onto the end of the pins, 
and they're not really, they kind of aren't. Right, I'm going to take a punt on this. Um, they may be making contact, may make no difference, but I'm going to start off by resoldering those chips. And I'll just put some flux on. I'll show you how to do it. Well, you'll know how to do it when you're mucking about like this. Do you know, when I put these videos up, I get a bunch of dislikes and uh, by the same old people. And it's the people that make a living out of... Uh, Changing, charging you 45, 50 quid just to change a chip. Which they probably, someone else has shown them how to do it anyway. But you know, if you're, if you're watching my videos guys, just bugger off will you? And let people do this thing. If I save one washing machine from going in the skip into landfill, then I'm happy. Because it saves another one being dug out the ground and all the paint and plastics being processed and all the copper and the ore being crushed and all the chemical and the transport and then the sales room you know this that and the other and then it just saves it doesn't it it makes so much sense to this could be just a one pound component and a bad pin couldn't it and this machine could go on for another four years right okay so without going on the binocular scope mind you look at that doesn't look good does it No, I mean that looks pretty well. The micro is much better solder than these things. That one, isn't it? I'm just going to re-solder those because I don't think I. One of them's definitely moving on the pad, and don't like the look of all this flux around here where they just look. Can do better on an 800 quid machine, don't you think? And then it could be the so I'm going to resolder these. So let's just do that, John. Let's just do that now. Do it. Right. What do I rest that on? I have a rubber pad, didn't I? There we go. So, victim number one. Get some of the lovely Kingbo flux. Zoom along here. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it's going to fix it? I don't think it will, but I think they need doing anyway. And in any case, if I decide to change them all, which is going to be the easiest thing, because they're about 25p each or something like that. So you're talking about 75p for the whole lot. Um, yeah, if it does turn, they do need resoldering. And if I do end up changing them, then the lead-free solder will make the desoldering process easier. Um, I was guessing you probably haven't got some of you guys out there have probably got soldering iron, but you haven't got a, a hot air gun. So I could do show you how to do it with just a... I'll do one of them, just a soldering iron. But I really should get the scope out and try and diagnose what's wrong with it. So all we need to do is put some solder on the tip, and then go around and flow these like they should have been done at the factory. So we've got some solder on the tip of the iron, not too much, and we're just letting the surface tension of the joint, like blotting paper, high surface tension of the solder. If you put it to a molten solder in a bath, like mercury, you get a, a huge convex meniscus, opposite to water. Because on water, the water is attracted to the side of the vessel by electrostatic forces and to itself, and with metal, it's all attracted to itself, and so it's a concave high surface tension and that's that makes it very good for absorbing on into a small gap so the solder will always try and go I can't really see this because my head's I can't get my head close enough to it because I keep getting my top of my bonts in the video so I've got my very blessed glasses on telescopic lenses in my glasses and I look like a right dork probably Mad Professor. My friend, my kids' friends call me the Mad Professor. So I've got, like, like the guy from the Back of the Future, the uh, Doc, whatever his name is. Yeah. 
wouldn't say my friends call that because I haven't got any friends. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. <laughs> and Rob, if you're watching, I know you're the one guy because you're jealous. You keep um, giving me one dislike. Immediately I <laughs> launch a video, I get one immediate dislike and it's Rob. I'm pretty sure it's Rob. If you're watching this, Rob, go down and hit the dislike button like you normally do. Don't think I don't appreciate it. Because if I'm annoying you, then, uh, well, the whole thing has been worthwhile. Flow, you bastard. Clean my tip, shouldn't I? Nobody likes a dirty tip. Well, maybe some people do, some clubs. Can you hear the wife? She's polishing the floor and she's had Ed Sheeran on for about six hours. The ginger winger. My goodness. If you don't know who Ed Sheeran is, look him up. He's very talented, but he does whine on a bit. Right, so there was one more, which I've already done. Let's touch that one up again. And that one over there doesn't look particularly good. Yeah. Right, what are your bets, ladies and gentlemen? Place your bets right now as to whether this is going to fix the bugger or not. I think not. I think if this doesn't work, it's the micro, and if it's the micro, I'm kind of screwed because they're. Yeah, it's going to be Flash Program Micro, and I haven't got the program. It's crushing it in the development kit out on the working board and see if they've blown the actual fuse that allows you to read the firmware. If you can't read the firmware out, you can't blast it in something else and we're a bit screwed. You've got a 60p micro there, 60 cent micro, and then the, it's lost its brains. Then you've got all this scrap because there's no... There, there'll be a JTAG programming socket on this or JTAG programming pins. Yeah, there's the JTAG probably. I mean, that might be a fiducial as well. But those three there are a connector header of some kind. But one of these will be a programming header, which you plug in for um, an SPI type or JTAG bus to do the programming, serial programming. Or if they're doing it in massive amounts, they might have an offline programmer where they program the chips before they put them on the board. Although I never like doing that because it does get very hot room reflow. And I always thought it could encourage it to lose its mind later on because the silicon equipment of Alzheimer's right so boys and girls what do you think what do you think right it's still wet that's what I think The only problem, <laughs> IPA all over the board, I've done it before, I've thought, been a bit impatient, turned it on and a component has blown up because something hasn't been fixed properly and it sets fire to the IPA and suddenly you've gone from wondering if it will work or not, thinking, how's it going to work if I turn this on to think, fuck, where's the fire extinguisher? That's if you've got any eyebrows left, that is. It happened to me a couple of times, I soon learned, that was back in my young experience days. Right. So no solder bridges, no solder blobs. It all looks pretty hunky-dory. 
can't see any other obvious dry joints, although that transistor, where is it? Somewhere. And by the way, pushing the joints is the only real way, especially on ICs, to see whether they're sold or not. If you can't see that fillet up over the pin, then you've got to give them a little push, because sometimes it's just a little bit of flux that's stuck up the pins on. But these are all clean. Now we've got the wick up, you see, we've got the actual step up onto the pin, so we know they're soldered. Um, and there's nothing worse than poncing around for hours and then find out it's just an unsoldered pin. So now I've learned from experience to inspect first and test second. Now I don't know if this is going to work or not. And if it doesn't work, it's going to be the shift register, the micro or the display. In which case I'm going to have to take the shift registers off and meter the display. And let's face it, if you take shift registers off, 25p each you might as well put new ones back on because then you know you've ruled that out um, you know if there were five pounds each or something that would be different wouldn't it but you know 35p or something renew your silicone be sure what you're doing have some confidence in the devices and physics will do the rest right I'll just plug the power in you can see how you Right, move the solder, get plenty of solder on the bench, the little ritual I go through to keep my eyebrows, uh, and then turn on. Right, so I've heard the click, so the relay clicked, so it's working. I should be able to hold it up this end. This is isolated mains anyway, so as long as I don't touch anything else. No, look. Got a load of LEDs flashing, and we didn't check for dry joints on this side of the board, did we? But can you see that? It's still, it's still doing the thing. If we look at the circuit for that, we've got uh, those two segments gone, and. I'm right, right, it's just changed. It's got arrow 04 now or arrow 14 or something. Right, turn it off before it gets too upset. Display our shift registers, boys, or micro. So, I've just dug. Uh, I've just dug some out of the drawer. I've got a tube of about 50 of these bloody chips. Exactly the same ones. So I'm going to change them. And what we do, I can do it. I'm going to do two of them with the hot air gun. And I'll do one with the soldering iron just to show you how it's done. You probably know this anyway. But if you don't have a hot air gun, then this is the way we solder our chips. So you put some flux on. Noting where pin one goes. They're all up this way, aren't they? So there you can see it. This gets a bit gassy but 400 degrees, decent iron, and then we just put some solder on, like that, and then we put some solder on this side, basically you're making a buzz bar, a heat buzz bar to keep the thing, give it some solar, solar, give it some thermal specific heat, don't solder on the things you shouldn't solder on to, and uh, a little bit more on that one, and a little bit more. Okay, so that's that, and then you get your tweezers, wherever they go. Stand by with your tweezers. I'm doing this at arm's length, so get it good and hot, and then you're just working both sides to make sure they're both good and hot. You can just scoot it out of the way like that. And the neat thing is, most of the solder just comes off. That's how you do it with the soldering iron. And not a hot air blower. And don't pull it until you're re it's ready to come off, boys, because um, you'll only pull the tracks off. 
Okay, so that's how you do that, and then I'll show you how you do it with the hot air gun, if you like. Contact on the old blah. Some blob. Some blobby on it. Now, if you are uh, hot air flowing, it's easier if you put a little bit of solder on, a bit of leaded solder on, just to uh, make an alloy of tin lead alloy, otherwise you'll have to get it quite a bit hotter to melt the actual pure tin solder on the what they call ROHS lead free boards, okay? So just run some down the pins like that on both of them and we wait for our hot air gun to get warm. We've got a temperature indicated on the blower of 336 degrees. It's a warm breeze. It's more than a Sirocco. Less than the fires of hell. And just give her a bit of a toasting and that's it. Looking for the smoke and alcohol now so that everything's going nicely. Can you see that melt then? Did you see that? And then still not all gone. I'm gonna have to look for the ones the tracks that have got the most copper on because they're the longest one because the heat gets drawn away from the pins by the actual tracking. So if you've got a big area of copper, so that's that one off. Now there's a couple of capacitors here, look, so you want to direct the heat away from that. These would be okay over here, but bear in mind if you've got heat sensitive components like aluminium electric, electrolytic capacitors or polyester plastic paste, cased, polyester, no, God's sake, polyester plastic cased capacitors, then you could have an issue. Okay, so you can see it all starting to flow. Keep wafting, boys, that's the thing. quite there yet. One of these is not melted. I don't know which one. Okay. Yeah, if you want to order these, that's the uh, Farnell 3120A95 and that's the uh, manufacturer's part number and these are Texas. Texas. Yeah. Texas. All right. So there's that. And here's the uh, Here's the components. Okay, so while we're at this, we might as well drop them back in, aren't we? The solder and everything's in position. We just need to put a little bit of flux on them. I'm going to flux you up. Right, people. So I get hold of that and give her a little bit of flux on the legs. She'll appreciate it. A bit of starters. A little bit more flux, it cleans off dead easy this stuff, it's like... Very, very good. If you're using this Kingbow BGA line, BAGA flux, the uh, RMA276, is it? RMA218, sorry. Just be aware that it's... Um, banned in California because it's allegedly got some nasty components in it um, but I did look up the safety data sheet and I couldn't see what they are so I do use it but I always have the window open and I have no idea just how bad how carcinogenic it is if it is but be aware do your own research if you think it might be Right, so I'm just going to heat that up, and I know it's not lined at the moment, but it will float into place. The actual surface tension of the soldier should grab a hold of that and make it go where I want it. I'm going to put more heat up on this corner, look, because that's where the big lump of copper is taking the heat away from that pad. So that one, that pad there, will probably be the very last one to melt, I should think. Be patient, let it heat up. Don't get too close. Don't knock the components with the end of your, your uh, blower. And there we go. Come on, melty, melty. A bit more down this end. Come on. 
There you go, just that pull into place. Okay, good molten. Maybe shove that over a little tiny bit more. Not too much. Okay, so that's how you do it with the hot air gun. And then I'll show you how to do it with the solder iron. With the solder iron, I like to uh, clean off the the old solder and do it bald. I think I don't like soldering. You can do it on top of the, uh, the pads, but it just gets a bit untidy because uh, you know the chips floating on a bunch of uh, uh, bulging solder pads, and it's never going to go that well. So I'll show you what I do. I mean, you've seen this stuff before in my other videos. The old um, solder wick and it's basically like blotting paper for solder as I mentioned. You'd be surprised what people um, spill into their amplifiers. Uh, do you know the worst thing I've ever seen was Ribena. The Ribena concentrate is just evil. It's full of acids and sugars and it bubbles and etches away. You could use it as an etching solution I think with the addition of a little bit of electricity. We'll have to try it. Right. When I turn the board on, it's multi-layer. I can see all lights inside the board. It's actually retreated inside the board, carbonized the inside the board, and the power layers were actually sparkling inside through the. And I said to the woman, "What did you spill into this thing?" I said, "I've seen red wine, seen white wine, I've seen cat urine." And she said, "Oh no, it was um, it was Ribena. A bottle of Ribena fell over." So they don't say it on the label, do they? Do danger. Do not spill into your electronic equipment. It will write it off. So solder pin number one, and then solder pin number two. Don't blink, otherwise you're going to miss this. Stay in focus, you focusing thing. My head in the way. So this is one we took off by hand soldering just to solder on, so it seems appropriate that we put it back on by hand soldering with the solder iron. Seems fair to me. Yeah, so the chips are all on. There they are, three shift registers. Is that a fourth one? No. ULN2003. Is there anything to do with the display? No, it's, that's the multiplex for the push buttons. That's not there. Yeah, I am. Um, it's just the same, just the bloody same. Right, so there's the back of the display. I think it's time to take the display out and uh, have a look at it. So, what I'm going to do is I could um, desolder suck those connections. They've been pretty messily soldered at the factory actually. I'm just going to use a piece of this is 2.5mm copper wire out of a piece of mains cable. I'm just going to make a copper buzz bar to go along there so that we can melt them all at once and just let it drop out because I find that sometimes these boards are very delicate and uh, it's just an easy way I use to get the uh, multi-pin devices through board devices out of the board on both sides I think that's them all melted now, don't you? That one another suck. Okay, so that's uh I don't know, that one needs to do too. Okay, that's the easier way. That's the way of getting a component out that you want to use again without stressing the leads or stressing the through plated holes. So here's the old display. Um, it was faulty. I think the vibration of the machine when it's washing, <clears throat> maybe the front of the uh, display was knocking on something or it's just the vibration, but there was a bad connection. And so I 
set my soldering iron to 320 and you kind of bore through this stuff it kind of doesn't smoke it just kind of disintegrates rumples up in front of the soldering iron and then use the cutters to clean off those pins because unfortunately like a twit I cut them a bit short so 14 pin 6 14 very dim look that's better 14 bad connection on the crocodile clip 14 <coughs> that's not 14 that's 14 14 yeah segment 14 is gone uh, 16 is alright 13 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is okay. You can see it glowing there, can't you? Uh, 5. 5. 5 is okay. Uh, 9, 10, 11. 11 is okay. 15. 15. And pin 7. Another dot that. Dotty dot dot dot. So it looks like we've got. <coughs> an issue with a segment on 16, 15, 14 yeah, the 14 segment is look, you can see it's hardly lighting up so this display is faulty after all it is collapsed, collapsed and we know it's not a pin soldering connection because it's all multiplexed and the other pins work so it's actually LED itself has blown so I will order some of those and stick them in and um, hopefully she'll be all singing and dancing again so that's where the problem lies actually in the display and I should wonder it's either overdriven or it's the vibration difficult to know or it's just a very poor quality the um, displays I've bought are these ones which are Vichet which is a better make um, it's a quality Taiwanese make so I'm imagining that's a much better display than the one that's in there again couldn't get one with the long pins, so I'm gonna to have to solder them on and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay. So on to the next step, let's put the new display in and see where we go from there. Right, I managed to get hold of some displays from Abnet. They uh, in the UK there wasn't any stock. At least there wasn't any stock you could order in sensible quantities. So I um, <laughs> called in a favour and asked them to send me some samples, and these are free samples. Um, when you buy a lot of semiconductors you have the advantage of obscure parts which are in other countries these came from Germany um, can get shipped to you as samples and you can get one or two spares based on the other tens of thousands of pounds of components that you buy for production which is what we do so as I say these are from Abnet in Germany and have they sent the right ones this is the question a little plastic box look, look at that, lovely. Oh, look at that, my scalpel handle's broken. Cheap Indian steel. <laughs> and there they are, lovely new displays. Um, these are not the same manufacturer as I said before. These are the Vichet ones, which I think are better quality, to be honest. Bound to be. There seems to be a display failure. It's a fairly common thing on these machines. And it's just poor LEDs, as we saw. So let's, um, let's solder this one back in and see how we get on with that. Right, so the display is in. Let's give her a quick clean. These hair dye bottles are brilliant. I don't dye my hair because I'm silver. But... They're very good little bottles, they're chemically resistant, polythene, wash them out, come with a little screw cap like that, perfect for um, putting your solutions in, or mystery solutions. Isopropyl alcohol, clean the joints up. Okay, inspector joints for shorts, whiskers, missing solder, dry joints, uh, little blobs of solder that got stuck on there, there are a couple, there's one, there's another, there's one there, and you can just pick them up with the tip of the soldering iron, 
Okay, so let's plug her in and see what she does, shall we? So there's our display. So first of all, make sure the power is off and uh, plug in the power. Okay, isolated power going in AC mains. Let's turn her over. Can't put it on this metal roll of tape because that wouldn't be a good idea with power on it. So I'm just going to lay it on the bench at the moment. Maybe just prop up one end if I can. Check that nothing's shorting, of course. Uh, anything on this side going to cause a short? Don't think so. A bit of flux on the display there, have to be careful of that. Right, okay, let's shut the door because I can hear the steak crying. Wednesday night is steak night in our house. Red meat. Right, okay, so here we go. Let's just see what she does. Turn the lights off so you can see a bit better. Oh, it looks... Yay! So three, 3 hours 58 on this cycle, whatever it was on. So the display is now working, so that is fixed, isn't it? We have a fixed controller, which will go back in the machine and keep it out of landfill for another few years. If you like what you saw, I'll just turn the lights on. Actually, it's much brighter than it was as well. Um, if you like what you saw, then subscribe to the button down there and click the, uh, the bell so you get notifications. Um, when I put a video up, that would be useful if you found this interesting. But that's the, um, that's the display fixed. So, yeah, it was a display. Everything's working. So we're going to put it back in the machine. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you're fixing yours and you've got any questions or you need some assistance, I'm happy to answer any sensible questions in the comments below. Um, yeah. So that's that, how to fix a, a NEF integrated washer-dryer controller. Two faults, the display, and the other fault was the um, power conversion chip had blown, which is very common. So if you see that power conversion chip in any of these the devices, when you're repairing them, just change the chip because they do age. That's what you should take away from this video. All right, hope you enjoyed that.